Welcome back to um, another video on speculating. Uh, as I teased um, in the prior video about this book, um, it has been great reading uh, for sure. Um, perhaps the most interesting thing right off the bat on page three is uh, this little paragraph. If you go back and watch uh, my very first video of this series, uh, I mentioned uh, the name Mitch Meddy is the young collector back in 1973 that's bought the action one for over $1,800 and make big news. Well, it made into this book as far as that transaction is concerned. Okay, let me read you the 1973 market report, okay? Early this year, a collector in California having just paid $1,800 for a good copy of Action Number no. 1 released the story to the press like wildfire the news spread from coast to coast. The publicity brought several large collections of rare books out of the attic into the open for sales. And it went on to mention how attendance and convention are increasing and all that stuff. So good stuff. Okay, so it's interesting to see, you know, how... Uh, some of this stuff ties in together based on my limited amount of uh, research I did. Uh, it's neat to see. And um, so this is 1974, um, which is uh, the, the fourth price guy, okay? And uh, unlike the other copies that I have, this one have very limited information uh, in the... Uh, early part of the books. Uh, there are some really interesting uh, articles that I have no problem scanning them or take a picture of them and posting them so that uh, you guys can read them if you're interested. But uh, there are no comparison of books value, like you know, the top 50 most valuable book of the Golden Age or Silver Age and all that stuff. So that's not in this book yet. In fact, I have been trying to research on when the term silver age or bronze age first appeared in popular culture you know so for those that know the answer uh, feel free to let me know because uh, uh, I just started the process and I haven't gotten very far and um, this is the first time I shoot a video <laughs> using the camera from my iMac so I have no idea how this is going to turn out so this is a weird angle for me because uh, usually I know where to look at to talk so if my uh, focus is not at the right spot my apology because I have no idea what I am looking at as I talk into the camera um, yeah, so that's uh, the neat part uh, the other neat part, of course, is this. So, in 1974, there are advertisements for comic bags, okay? Um, I did not, I looked through it, um, through this book quite thoroughly, and there are no mentioning or ads for backing board. So, that is uh, still a mystery to me as far as when backing boards were introduced and mass produce and sold in scales. The one thing that's interesting on this book also is uh, like the previous version that I uh, talked about in 1978, 1980, it contained a very similar paragraph that we have heard many times before. Right here, since speculation in the comic book market started 
around 1964, most all titles since that time have been saved and are plentiful supply. Look like Mr. Overstreet is using the same disclosure. <laughs> Even as early as 1974, who knows if uh, you know if I have a somebody have a copy of 1973, 72, 71, that same paragraph might be in there. And once again, the term panologist appear in this book. So, um, okay, um, the one tidbit about this book that. I find extremely interesting that directly relate to the, the, the topic of speculation is uh, valuation. You understand this is 1974, so it very much uh, reflect what was hot prized and sought after. Okay, so this is a direct peer into the past of what was considered popular, hard, and good investments. Uh, as in the previous videos I done, I did a, a quick comparison of Iron Man and Thor and mentioned how you know, Iron Man back then was a B uh, list or even a C list. Uh, so naturally I went to this book, 1974, which is four years earlier than the previous video and I found something very interesting. Not surprising, but very interesting. Okay, let's take a look at Iron Man number one. Okay, so this is where um, Iron Man number one supposed to, Iron Man supposed to be, and uh, it's not even worth putting the pictures in there. <laughs> Iron Man number one, one dollar and twenty, one dollars and twenty cents, one dollars and twenty cents. Okay. And to give you an idea of what is hot. Look at you see a picture of Swamp Thing number one. Now, this is a good comparison because remember, Iron Man number one is not his first appearance. Okay, Tale of Suspense thirty nine is so same thing with Swamp Thing. Swamp Thing um, first appearance is uh, House of Secret ninety two. So here you have something number one, two dollars. So the value of something number one is more valuable than um, Iron Man number one. So it's just to give you an idea of what the market was thinking back then. Um, it's, it's like I said, it's a lot of fun to peer back into the past and see how the market values a lot of things and Conan number one okay uh, Conan number one look at this there's a picture of Conan number one right there Conan was red hot in 1974 $7 so Conan one was $7 Swamp Thing number one was two dollars and Iron Man number one was a dollar twenty. Last but not least, and then um, X Men number one. You know, you understand X Men when that, it, when this came out, X Men ninety four and Giant Size has already hit the market. So um, the rebirth of the X Men are uh, starting, but. Even then, X Men number one. Let's see, get in the camera. X Men right here. Ten dollars in mint condition. So, can, can can you imagine how low 
the X Men was in the ranking of relevance at the moment. You have Conan number one, valuing at seven dollars, while a copy of X Men number one is barely more expensive. The one thing that this book illustrates very well is what's hot today may be not so hot 30 years from now and vice versa what may be not too hot 30 years ago may be hot today so it, it keep coming back to the same point that I always bring up to younger collectors that ask me about investment what book to buy what book to invest I can't help it but always say buy what you like, buy what you enjoy, buy what you can relate to, and let the chips fall where they may where they may be. Um, it's not to say that I don't like to see my books go up in value. Who doesn't? But at the end of the day, I enjoy collecting a lot more if I'm not so focused about what the future value of something is gonna be because I don't know, none of us know. Uh, there's people that can do very well in the game of speculation. And if you can do it, if you can make money flipping for five, 10, 50 bucks, whatever you make, you can make and enjoy doing it, go for it. It's not for everybody. Uh, it's just like uh, stock trading. Not everybody should trade stocks. Uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, so I, recommend the same thing with uh, trading stocks when people ask me about you know wanting to make money in a stock market my first advice is it's not for everybody just like in comic books uh, you know uh, I know how to enjoy comic books my way but uh, when it comes down to trying to speculate on what's hot and what's not what's in the future I don't know to be honest um, the one thing that I think what's really neat is um, now that we see these ads here, okay, I found something in my collections um, in the past few months. Over Christmas, I went through um, 10 short boxes of comic books I have to organize and see if I can sell something and give away something. I had literally 10 short boxes of stuff that I want to get rid of. And as I was going through them, I found something in there that I didn't know I had, I forgot years ago. And let me show you something interesting, okay? A few years back, I bought a run of Conan from a collector and he bought them basically right off the rack and he bags them himself uh, so this is uh, late 70s early 1971 through mid 1971 it was a run of uh, Conan from 1 to 10 I bought a run from him and since then I have sold probably half of them I think when I first got them some of the book were in beautiful condition so I slapped them number one got like a 9.6 I slapped them sold them um, but I kept the remaining five or six issues in a box and I forgot about them until Christmas and when I found them again I noticed something that gave me a hint that they could be some of the earliest bags in comic books because this is 1971 we're talking about okay so here are the books okay here's are some of the books and here's are the bags look at the I took I took uh, some of the books out of the bag to show you this is what the bags look like and look at this bag here basically they um, you know, uh, from this Robert Bell, um, and I have to say, the f you know, 
all of us that have cheap bags know how they age over the years, right? They turn yellow and wrinkly and not very nice looking after even like sometimes five years, not even 10 years. So these are the original bag that this collector put these Conan in in 1971, okay? And look at that. They actually are pretty thick uh, poly. Uh, and they age well. Look at that. You know, they they look damn good for poly bags, right? I mean, anyone that has poly bags that are 10 years old will, will can attest that they don't age this well. But look at these. These are actually really thick. They are probably, um, you know, I, I can't say for sure, but no doubt if you, if you can feel it in your hand. And um, what's neat you know about these books uh, are you know they all had you see the date stamps so this so that was like these came out in 1971 so no doubt these books these bags were put together back in 1971 okay so I, I can say it's safe to say that you know in 1971 prior to 1974 as in this book Mr. Bell was selling and these are what the bags look like okay and um, you know like I said I still have quite uh, a few of those Conan so here's the other books uh, issue 7 and 8 beautiful I mean it's probably 8, 8, 5 ish in condition but you see they all had the date stamps, 1971, right there. So it's a kind of a cool provenance to these Conans that uh, I have. But anyhow, um, I hope you enjoyed the video. And until next time, thanks for watching. Okay, bye.